Meatballs is a traditional Swedish dish. We serve it with mashed potato. This is definitely a dish that will make you survive the winter. I'm Emma, I'm the executive chef of Aquavit in New York City. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make Swedish meatballs. I'm using panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna add our egg, cream, let's do some mustard. It's basically up to your preference, whatever mustard you like. I'm gonna use some allspice as well. It's obviously not Swedish from the beginning, but we do use it a lot in our cuisine. Also add salt, and then I'm gonna let that sit for a couple minutes so it swells up together a little bit as a paste. When it comes to making Swedish meatballs, it's not so much about the actual meatball as what we serve it with. The mashed potatoes, you gotta have the lingonberries, cucumber, we're gonna incorporate almost 50-50% ratio pork and beef, because the pork has more fat. So if you lean towards 100% beef, it will be very lean and it's gonna turn into a very dry tasting meatball. I grew up watching my mom and my grandma in the kitchen. When they were making the meatballs, you would always steal one off the counter. They make them extra small, so you can eat like 35 of them. I'm a little bit squeamish when it comes to ground beef. I've always been, so I always want to sear it off so I can test it. I'm making sure we have enough salt in there. Oh, not bad. Growing up, I wanted to be a chef, but there were more exciting things to be as well. Fighter pilots was one of them. Also wanted to be a, a deep sea diver. Very high extreme sports. I don't know where chefs came in. I was on my way into the Swedish military and I got offered a very good internship position in a restaurant outside of Stockholm that I couldn't say no to. After that, I never had time for anything anymore. <laughs> it was love, love at first sight, almost. We'll place them in the fridge for around two hours before we sear them so they don't fall apart on you. While the meatballs are in the fridge, we're gonna make the mashed potatoes. We're gonna peel our potatoes, preferably use Yukon place them in cold water. We're gonna add salt. I let this boil up, and it should take around 40 minutes. Now we're gonna start doing the cream sauce. We keep it very simple, very traditional. We have our veal stock, and then we're gonna add heavy cream. Turn the stove on and obviously keep an eye on it. It's gonna start reducing down to about a third. We want that creaminess to it. It probably will take you around 45 minutes. So let's do our mash. We're gonna take the potatoes and strain it. You can use a, a ricer. I've always had this lifelong dream. I either wanted to come and work in New York or I wanted to go work in Australia. I remember 10 years ago, after a long service, I was making jokes that this is the week, this is, this is now, it's gonna happen, I have a good feeling. Didn't really thought that much more about it after that. I woke up the next day and had a, <laughs> had a Facebook message from uh, the chef of Aquavit in New York. He was looking for a pastry chef. I thought it was my work colleagues playing a prank on me, so I didn't answer until two days later when I went to work and I realized, okay, crap. This might be real. So I messaged him back and I moved to New York two months later. We have our potatoes riced. The secret to mashed potato is butter. You gotta have that butter. The fatter, the better. Please use real butter in here. Like stay away from all those fake products. They won't you do any good. Just eat a little bit less. Or go to the gym. There's gyms everywhere. It's perfect. Anyway, I do neither, I just eat it. I'm gonna put some pepper in here. I'm gonna put some salt. And then we're gonna add some milk. The consistency is more of a puree than a mash. Our sauce is reduced and ready. You get this nice luxury dark brown color to it. We are gonna give the sauce a lighter flavor to it. So I brought lingonberries with me. So lingonberries is a Nordic tart berry. They're very high in antioxidants and very delicious. If you can't find the frozen ones, you can find the, the jam. Because of the perfectionist in me, I think I want to pass my mash through a sifter so we get all those little lumps up. The puree is looking good. We have our meatballs. Let's cook them off. So we'll start with some oil. 
start adding them in. I did go to culinary school to pursue savory, and my first job ended up to be pastry. It wasn't the plan at all, but I think with being a perfectionist, it kind of turned out to be a better choice for me, and I think that's why I ended up doing pastry for almost 20 years. Savory is more impulsive, let's go, let's do that, let's do this, while pastry is more like, oh, let's think about this. What would happen if we do this? And I like my meatballs in two different ways. Obviously the way my mom does them, where they're like all the way cooked and almost black on the sides. I hope she doesn't see this. <laughs> but I also like meatballs to have a little bit of a, a rare center. So I don't think everyone needs to be scared of having that little pink center. All right, so they got a little bit of a pre-sear in the oil. We're gonna add some butter. And we're also gonna brown up the butter a little bit and get that nutty, caramely, wonderful flavor from it. All right, let's plate our meatballs. We're gonna start with our mash. Let's pick out the prettiest meatballs. And you wanna have around seven. We're gonna add lingonberries. And then we have our traditionally pickled cucumbers. We put a solution of sugar, white distilled vinegar, and water on them. Some cream sauce. It's so nice to see all the components coming together. It's actually really good. <laughs> this takes me back home to Sweden and searing the meatballs off heavier and that ripe pop of lingonberries, the cucumber, you get that little acidity. For the recipe, click the link below or you can just come to the restaurant. We serve meatballs every day.